right, it's a good day to be the weather guy on this uh, 13th day of September. Welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks. Our mid-September forecast is a real winner. Uh, hard to find too much to complain about for the next few days, but we're going to, of course, find some interesting things to discuss this evening on the Valley's Most In-Depth Weather Forecast video. First of all, thanks to Tyler Berry, one of our best uh, storm spotters and photographers across the region for sending this uh, photo to us. Last evening, September sunflowers, Mill Creek Metro Parks in Mahoning County. Great uh, sunset out there last evening, and while today was kind of gloomy looking, a lot of us kind of enjoyed the nice cool down that we had for today. Don't forget, you can always submit weather pictures right here, weatherpics at wfmj.com. That's the email address. You can submit them directly on the Storm Tracker 21 app as well, and uh, hit me up on Instagram, Eric WFMJ, for all sorts of cool weather pictures. Uh, follow the Storm Tracker 21 account on Instagram as well. All right. Did a couple of reminders on TV today of, uh, of kind of why we tend to favor talking about dew points rather than relative humidity. Today's a good example. Relative humidity values here at 7, 10 p.m., 75% at Youngstown, 78% at Newcastle. Pretty high numbers, right? Well, no one's stepping outside and saying it's humid out there this evening. It's muggy. No. Well, dew points are down in the lower and middle 50s, and we generally consider that to be in the comfortable category, of course, during the warm weather season. So good example of, of dew points being superior to relative humidity in most cases. Uh, it's a better measure of the volume of moisture that is in the air and how the air actually feels. All right, we spent today underneath our upper level low, which is now getting a kick out to the east. When we're underneath one of these upper lows, especially in the fall season, we oftentimes have to watch out for water spouts on the Great Lakes. And we had a few off of Lake Erie uh, earlier on today, off the coast of Cleveland on Lake Erie, I should say. We had some thunderstorm activity underneath our upper low in western parts of New York. We actually had a few reports of severe weather this afternoon out across New England, Massachusetts, Connecticut, up into uh, upstate New York as well. Sometimes these upper lows can really uh, you know, pack a punch, depending on exactly the situation. For us, it just brought us cool weather and a little taste of October today. Out west is where most of the action is, and they had uh, flooding problems earlier this week in a lot of Southern California. Still even a few uh, flash flood warnings for a few locations in Southern California, but broadly speaking, uh, most of the problems are in the Intermountain West where flood watches are out for a good chunk of Nevada, including the Las Vegas area, uh, parts, of, parts of the uh, Wasatch Range, the mountain range in Utah, also some of the terrain out of uh, the valley that surrounds Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, under a flood watch this evening. As promised, 67 today. We got our forecast right on the money. 67 is about 10 degrees cooler than average. And that's where our low temperature was Monday morning. So again, big, big change today. But bigger changes are on the way as we head through the next several days. Now, there might be a little fog at the start of the, uh, Wednesday, especially across north central Ohio, closer to Mansfield, maybe up to Cleveland. But I doubt we see a whole lot in our area. I think it's just going to be a nice day with a good deal of afternoon sun. Plenty of sunshine in our Thursday forecast. And high pressure continues to drift around on Friday making for beautiful weather for high school football Friday evening, and the clouds and showers will stay off to our north. If you check the forecast on the Storm Tracker 21 app, nada. Chance of rain through Tuesday uh, remains negligible. Some modeling tries to bring a front down early next week, but that's kind of the exception right now. We're not buying that at this point. Our forecast uh, remains bullish on the warm and dry weather through the first half of next week. And the reason for that, uh, the jet stream is going to become pretty amplified as we go into next week. And what that means is big, deep troughs, big ridges. Our trough crashes into the West Coast, and by early and middle uh, portions of next week, it's kind of centered out here across the Intermountain West, up into the prairies of Canada. Downstream, look at this ridge. I mean, this is strong stuff for this time of the year. If we, if we were in July, we'd be talking about 90s easily for daytime highs next week. We're not in July. Um, and so we're going to make it into the middle 80s, it looks like. Not record territory. I checked out some of the records for early next week. And uh, those records are mostly in the lower 90s. I doubt we'll get that warm. So this warm pattern has some staying power. Now, this 8 to 14 day outlook ends on September 27th. I am seeing some signals in the modeling for the last few days of the month that the pattern will turn cooler. But I think it'll take until the last few days of the month, through about the 25th to 27th, somewhere in that neighborhood. In other words, the next oh, 12 days or so. I think it's uh, very likely we are going to be very toasty by September standards. All right, another short video on this quiet Tuesday evening. Thanks, as always, for watching Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll see you right back here on Wednesday.